Welcome everyone in the third lecture of Pyramid Design and Tutorial. The lecture contained uh, mainly the uh, three layer system. We will also try to understand what is vertical surface uh, deflection, what is uh, uh, what how we can determine the vertical intersurface uh, deflection. So that means that we can we will also try to learn the technique that how we can uh, uh, differentiate deflection stresses and strain exactly at above the surface and within the within the thickness layer we will also try to understand the the importance of vertical stresses and horizontal radial stresses in the three layer system uh, buzziness and barometer develop one and two layer system but this but uh, the but uh, one and two layer system was not able to calculate the uh, structural property uh, properly so in the flexible pavement pavement subgrade all of them are consist of different type of a material okay uh, in the three layer system before to go in a very detail it mainly consists of a three layer the first one is a top layer the second one is a bottom layer which we call middle layer while the lower surface is called bottom layer okay <clears throat> the top layer consists of all the bitumen layer okay which uh, which uh, including the uh, surface course as well while the middle layer uh, consists of a base and sub base course while the bottom layer mainly consists of a subgrade for the, the uh, three layer system the following the already mentioned assumption were actually made the material in each layer is homogeneous but different from from the uh, other in the layer while layer 1 and layer 2 are in are the finite in thickness of course its depth is already uh, determined but the lower layer which we call bottom layer is basically infinite okay and all these three layers are basically uh, also infinite in the lateral direction as well means in the uh, x axis as well uh, the load or like tire or the wheel load is assumed to be uniformly distributed or a circular contact area so this is the assumption in the uh, three layer system okay now we will also try to determine that how we can uh, how we can determine the different uh, surface as you can see here the h1 is basically the thickness of a top layer while the h2 is the thickness of a second layer the interface is called the uh, exactly the middle portion in the layer number one while the above portion of a layer number two while the interface between the interface two means the one above the sub base while uh, above the subgrade okay <coughs> uh, you can see here in a more uh, detail as well uh, z1 and z2 are basically the uh, influence factor for the vertical stresses in the uh, three layer system which we will determine the value of a k but that we will jump later on okay for the time being you need to understand that uh, for example the h1 is the uh, depth or thickness e1 e2 are, are the young modulus well if you want to determine the z z1 uh, we can determine that uh, at the first uh, interface as well exactly the uh, second layer as well while in the third layer as well <coughs> We can also determine the similarly is like vertical we can also determine the horizontal vertical stresses as well okay as uh, you can see here with which is uh, nominated with rr1 okay uh, these are the figures which we can do like for example in the first uh, interface we can determine zz1 and zz2 while in, uh, the vertical horizontal radial stresses we can determine at uh, first interface as well as at the second interface as well uh, how we will determine that that part we will learn in the tutorial portion so this is <clears throat> our very one typical example where we have a three layer system okay so the top layer is uh, having the young modulus of 600 uh, ksi while the second one is a uh, 30 ksi while the the lower layer is contain 15 ksi the first layer depth or height is uh, 3 inches while the second one is uh, 12 and what we want to determine first of all uh, the circular load is acting from the top which load is almost 80 psi okay and we have uh, radial horizontal distance around 6 inches as well 
so we would like to determine or to uh, derive the vertical stresses at uh, interface 1 and 2 as well as we are we would also like to understand that how we can uh, determine the horizontal radial stresses at interface 1 2 and 3 as well okay uh, so that is basically the solution portion as you can see here as I solved the, uh, the whole problem for uh, for the better uh, understanding as well so uh, the core purpose of this question is to determine the vertical stresses as well as the horizontal radial stresses while the the influence factor at uh, first layer we call that one ZZZZ1 while uh, the influence factor at uh, second layer we call it ZZ2 okay here you can see the formula for the vertical stresses uh, sigma z1 is equal to pc which is basically loading or a wheel load okay uh, in the terms of its, uh, uh, the uh, vertical uh, interface okay it's a influence factor at the uh, first layer which we call zz1 while at the uh, zz2 when we want to determine it uh, interface 2 similarly the horizontal radial stresses as well uh, its formula is sigma z1 minus sigma r1 which is uh, equal to uh, load pc into z z1 minus rr1 okay similarly for uh, zz2 for the second layer and similarly for the third layer as well now the first step now the very first step to resolve uh, the problem the tutorial okay so we would like to determine the vertical stresses at the uh, interface layer 1 so sigma z1 is equal to pc into ZZ, uh, zz1 okay uh, load is already given uh, but uh, ZZ value we will determine it from the three layer uh, John uh, John graphical system okay which we called uh, like for example the uh, the same value is called stresses and strain factor from the three layer system okay so the very first step is to reach to like uh, that level so for the very first step is we will uh, determine the value of K k is basically the influence elastic factor okay so k1 is equal to e1 by e2 uh, similarly the k2 is equal to e2 by e3 as you can see here we have a three layer system we have uh, e1 okay keep in mind one thing the the uh, denominator factor will always be the supporting layer as you can see here in the uh, k1 is equal to e1 by e2 so means the one which is basically supporting e1 similarly in the uh, k2 factor we will uh, divide the e2 value with the e3 the one which is basically supporting the same layer so we almost got k1 and k2 as well okay so the 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 third important parameter which is very much important for for the to determine the value of a zz1 we also need the value of a, a. A is already mentioned which was uh, 6 inches but this A is equal to capital A which is equal to basically uh, the radial distance in the total height uh, in the uh, in the uh, uh, the height of the layer which is basically supporting the base layer okay so A was uh, 6 inches 6 divided by 12 inches so which is almost 0.5 so we would also like to determine the height as well the total height of the uh, thickness of that uh, supporting layer so h is equal to h1 by h2 so h1 is uh, 3 inches divided by 12 which is 0 0.25 so now we would like to understand that how we can select the value of a zz1 so all the parameter is almost there so we have the value of k1 which is 20 we have the value of k2 which is 0 0.2 we have the value of a which is 0 0.5 and similarly we have the value of h which is 0 0.25 okay so uh, zz1 value here is 0 0.05 so simply we will determine we will uh, multiply it with sigma z1 which was load into 0 0.05 which is almost 4 psi so now the question still remain that how we will uh, measure the 0 0.05 value let's go to the next slide here you can see here uh, in the very bottom of the figure you can see here this is the value of a zz1 when we have the k1 value is 20 while the k2 value is 2 okay uh, this is the uh, stress and strain factor which is used for the uh, three layer system according to the highway research board 
which is uh, which were basically determined in 1962 okay so how are we going to select the value okay so k1 is uh, okay exactly we have the k1 value of 20 k2 value of 2 so now we uh, we have the a value of a was uh, 0 0.5 while the h is 0 0.25 as you can see here at the exactly left side we have the value of a h so h here is starting from 8 and uh, from 1 to 8 okay so we will go in the same direction uh, we have the value of 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.25 which you can see here and uh, exactly at your uh, right hand side then we will draw the same figure of a so the value of a was 0 0.5 so you can see here is 0 0.4 and 0 0.8 so the middle value is 0 0.6 so the value will be exactly between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 <clears throat> what we're going to do we're going to intersect the same line of a a where it is uh, going to intersect with h so the same line was almost is 0 0.05 so like because uh, the same line is uh, drawn if, as you can see here here in the parallel of 0.25 which is almost 0 0.05 while after that we have 0 0.1 value and so on so we select our zz1 first factor almost 0 0.05 uh, similarly, as uh, you can see, just to give you again the idea, so we have uh, the ZZ value of 0 0.05, which is almost, which is already mentioned. Okay. <coughs> now we will jump to the uh, next part. So now we we would like to determine the vertical stresses at the uh, at the uh, second interface or the lower interface. So similarly, we have the value of K1 and K2 and uh, A and H and uh, so on. So we're gonna go to the to the same value and we're gonna determine the ZZ2 value. But you just need to keep in mind one thing, like in the in the uh, previous slide, we have we we're gonna need to determine the value of ZZ1, but here we're gonna need to determine the value of a ZZ2. And here you can see a little bit uh, the core difference. Okay, so now we're gonna extend the same portion in the uh, to the next level okay so so we already determined the vertical stresses now we would like to determine how we can measure the radial stresses as well okay <coughs> as you can see here we already known the vertical stresses uh, is already derived sigma z1 and sigma z2 okay which is 4 psi and another one is 2.4 psi okay so we're gonna uh, determine the radial horizontal stresses now what is sigma r1 sigma r2 and sigma r3 these three factors are unknown okay so the value for the uh, radial stresses is sigma z1 minus sigma r1 which is, is equal to load into zz1 minus rr1 which was basically our influence factor if we're gonna determine uh, the value of the radial stresses because uh, in that specific portion we're gonna we're gonna consider the offset with the depth okay that's why we have the value of a zz1 as well as we have the value of a rr1 as well okay let's go to the next slide here you can see now our main task is to determine the sigma r1 okay for that purpose we're gonna do the same uh, the same uh, process again first of all we're gonna determine the, the value of k1 which is e1 by e2 the similarly for the uh, k2 as well similarly for a and similarly for h and uh, then now we're gonna uh, we need the value of a zz1 minus rr1 zz1 is basically the depth rr1 is basically the offset okay so how we can determine that value so this is a uh, little bit tricky because before uh, we don't have uh, like for example the value of a was exactly there for example if the value of a is uh, 0 0.5 so we can determine it directly but now we have the two value in the in the graph as you can see here the one is 0 0.4 while another one is 0 0.8 so we don't have 0 0.5 value so what we gonna do any idea we gonna use the interpolation method <coughs> as you can see here a little bit uh, the value of a if we go exactly to the uh, zz1 minus rr1 but here we don't have the uh, in the column of a we don't have the value of a 0 0.5 so that's why we're gonna select the 0 0.4 as well as 0 0.5 as well okay 
so for example maybe some of you have little bit idea about the uh, interpolation method interpolation we usually use when uh, when uh, for example we have a uh, few factors when uh, some of them are known and some of them are unknown so for example x1 and y1 is already known similarly the x2 and y2 is already known but uh, the but the uh, another factor which is x3 and y3 which is the one is known and another one is not known so we have a simple formula of a uh, tan theta uh, perpendicular divided by uh, hypotenuse so y3 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 which is uh, is equal to y3 minus y2 divided by x3 minus x2 so if we have the unknown element as y2 so we can determine the same value uh, through the uh, cross multiplication y3 minus y1 is equal to y3 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 multiply x3 minus uh, x2 so the missing link is basically y2 okay so this is basically uh, the value uh, or the missing value of a, a which is 0 0.5 we will uh, resolve that problem through through uh, that uh, interpolation method as you can see here in the next slide here you can see here we have uh, the two value of a, a one is 0 0.4 another one is 0 0.8 so one value is 3.86 another one is 5.50 because we don't have the value of a 0 0.5 so what we're gonna do we're gonna determine that gap between 0 0.4 and 0 0.8 okay as you know the, we have a formula for tan theta so while uh, you know like interpolating the same according to our scenario we want to we would like to determine zz1 minus rr1 so uh, the 3.86 is basically the uh, the factor uh, the uh, above one we uh, just simply uh, through the uh, interpolation method is uh, you can see here the lower factor in the higher the y2 minus y1 similarly the x2 minus x1 uh, multiply by the factor for example the uh, 0.5 is or or uh, a value while the 0.4 is the one which was basically uh, from the uh, starting one so like as you can see here we have the high value of the uh, interpolation and 0.4 value is basically the uh, starting one that's why we multiply the factor with that value so we have a value of a zz1 minus rr1 almost 4.27 so we have a formula z, uh, sigma z1 minus sigma r1 which is equal to pc into uh, zz1 minus r1 so now we have almost all the, the uh, parameters are known so we have the value of a wheel load which is 80 while we have the value of a zz1 minus r1 which is 4.27 we have also the uh, the value of a sigma uh, z1 as well uh, as one which is 4 so from here you can determine sigma r1 very easily so here is just a classification so that how we can get uh, that value okay so if uh, you just don't know that how to uh, go with the zz1 is you can see here zz1 minus rr1 similarly we will do the same technique for the zz2 minus rr2 and similarly for the zz3 minus rr3 until we didn't get for example the same method will actually repeat it if we don't have exact value of a, a available uh, in the figure so the missing link the gap we will determine it through the uh, interpolation method as you can see here just uh, to give you like for example because uh, at the a side this is a one just uh, classification that we're going to select value from here is we don't have the value of 0 0.5 so and similarly here this is our uh, chart according to k1 and k2 and h value so from here we're going to select all values uh, this is basically the very last one uh, so we're gonna determine the sigma z2 minus sigma r2 so we have almost all the values so again we will go to the uh, stress and uh, strain figure and we will determine from uh, from there the value of zz2 minus rr2 okay again and through the uh, interpolation method similar technique we will use and then we will uh, determine zz2 minus rr2 and similarly we will do it for the zz3 uh, zz2 minus rr3 so we can determine easily the all the uh, horizontal radial stresses values as uh, just a figure just to give you an uh, idea okay so here we have little bit differences you can see here so all those values are basically uh, varying according to the height according to the uh, influence factor of a k1 k2 so you gonna very be you need to be very careful while selecting all those values okay